Masters of the Universe, Masterverse fans, you already know what time it is. It's been a couple months since our last Masterverse wave review. So you know what that means. Of course, I had to hit up the Mattel Toy Store and see if they had none other than Masterverse Wave 11, which is going to be the subject of today's Deceptibot 9 reviews. Let's go ahead and kick it. How's it going everyone? Deceptibot9 here and thank you as always for joining me for another Masterverse review. Now before we go ahead and look at the figures, I would like to ask if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like button. Plus, if you want to stay tuned for all the future content I've got planned, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you never miss a video and stay informed. Um, plus, all of my social links are in the description down below, including my Entertainment Earth Affiliate link, if you need to buy any of your Masters of the Universe figures, go ahead and uh, use that link down there. It'll save you, a little bit of hell, uh, save you a little bit of cash, and it'll help me out as well, which is always greatly appreciated. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead, head down to the review station, and take a look at Sorceress Tila, Skeletor, Men-at-Arms, and Trapjaw. All right, now, before we actually take a look at the figures themselves, uh, before I take them out of their packages even, I wanted to show off, of course, the brand new Masterverse packaging, uh, which we saw originally at San Diego Comic-Con, and I thought it looked great then, but honestly, in hand, it looks way, way better. It is so, so cool. I know some people don't like uh, that we can't see as much of the figure um, as the old packaging, but... This new box style just has so much more life to it, uh, in my opinion. You know, it feels a lot more like the Origins packaging, which just has, you know, so much color and and pop to it. Uh, and the original Masterverse packaging just, uh, in my opinion, honestly felt very bland when you looked at it as a whole, with the exception of the back artwork, which looked tremendous. So they've now taken that artwork and kind of moved it to the front and wraparound sections of the box, which I think is a brilliant, brilliant choice. Let's kind of take a look at each of them individually, just really, really fast, uh, so you can kind of see the whole scope of what I'm talking about here. All right, so we will start here with Man at Arms. Of course, you can see now uh, we've got the name of the character here on the side, and this artwork just goes all the way around the packaging now, which is just so, so nice. The Motu New Eternia logo here, nice and big. Of course, figure window going on right there. Top still says Masterverse with the sort of rock uh, look to it that we saw like on the 40th anniversary He-Man. Uh, the side over here obviously is the wraparound. The back here, it's got like product shots now uh, on top of an art background, which I think is really, really neat. I think this photography is all really cool, sort of showing off the different you know, accessories and what they do uh, all over the place, which is really, really nice. He still has uh, a bio here, well, which is really cool, as well as the whole wave, plus a little uh, profile shot, which is cool. And then they retain the art from the side of the package. So this is, you know, unchanged from the old Masterverse aesthetic. And it looks very, very nice. So, yeah, I mean, overall, that's Men at Arms. And we'll just show off the other ones really quick. Here's Skeletor from the upcoming Revolution show. You can see he's all sort of motherboarded out here on the side with some motherboard acolytes here. And Screech slash motherboard herself there. Triclops over there. Just, I love the wraparound art. It's just so cool. Masterverse logo there at the top. Uh, on the back, here's his product shots with uh, his alternate or his his accessories. No alternate stuff, but there is his bio here as well, so you can pause to read that uh, coming from the upcoming show. And of course, side art there. Oh, that, that one is so cool. I love that one. All right, here is Trapjaw. You can see, of course, the name right there. New Eternia logo there. The artwork here is just absolutely gorgeous all the way around on that one here is the back with the product shots all of his alternate accessories and what you can do with his arm there is uh his bio so you can see new eternia trap jaws bio and the side art there again just beautiful and last one here is sorceress tila with the revolution logo down there as well there she is there's she on the artwork as well which looks great uh in the old sorceress up there beautiful i just i, I love that picture right there 
And here is her product shots with all the things that she can do. Here is her bio from the upcoming Revolution show and her artwork there on the side. Absolutely beautiful. So, you know, as beautiful as this packaging is, I do have to take everything out. So we will go ahead and take everything out and we'll be back in just a second. All right, here is a quick overview of all four figures in Masterverse Wave 11 with all of their accessories before we take a look at them individually and my initial thoughts on the figures overall they're all pretty solid uh i think this is a wave that i prefer over uh, our previous wave wave 10 but maybe not as much as wave 9 which i i still think is master versus best wave uh in the whole line so far but this one comes a very very close maybe by the end of the review our minds will be changed on that because there is some really solid stuff going on here in this wave. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at these figures individually. Uh, well, I'm going to go in order of my least favorite to my favorite of the wave. So we're going to start with Sorceress Tila. All right. So initially looking at Sorceress Tila here, you can see that she is mostly just reuse of the uh, Sorceress, the Masterverse Sorceress body from wave eight, um, which has, you know, its own set of problems. Uh, but overall, I do think she is quite solid. You can see here, I think she looks great. She definitely looks great. Um, but just like Sorceress, there are, you know, some articulation hindering things happening with the skirt piece here. Not a huge deal. Um, it, it does kind of suck a little bit, uh, but really, honestly, not that much. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at the details here on Tila. Starting off with this head sculpt. Looks absolutely great. She's just kind of got a neutral stoic face going on with her red eyebrows, painted up eyes, and lips. And you can see she's got a nice uh, crown going on here, uh, which kind of looks also like an Amazonian style kind of helmet with the way these uh, side pieces come down. But we got some gold and some red happening there. The hair is molded very, very nicely. It does look absolutely spectacular love the way that looks if you look here on the back you can see her cape which looks nice it is of course uh fabric just like all of the masterverse capes most of the masterverse capes i should say i'm pretty sure all of them are fabric uh we got gold here on the top with white and gold tips and then if we go back to the front we can see her shoulder pieces here which look nice you get a mix of two different kinds of gold we got a red gem here in the middle with some painted white little bit of fur texture happening here at the top with the arm color, painted arm bands, painted up gauntlets right there on her arms. And you can see just kind of the rest of her here is just the legs are all plain, no real molded muscle detail or anything happening in those legs. And we get the boots with the white painted fur on top and the blue belt with the uh, gold painted toe highlights. And I mean, that's going to be about it for, for the detail there on Tila. She's, you know, she's got the normal sort of master versus female aesthetic body going on. And, you know, like I said, she is pretty much a uh, reuse from the sorceress body with some paint differences and different molding up here on the chest and the head, obviously. And that does also come, uh, to her accessory. Ooh her accessories, which are all exactly the same as the Sorceress. So as you can see on her, she's got uh, this kind of open splayed out magic hand and she does come with an alternate one of those as well. And on this side, she does have a grip hand, which she also has a second of there as well so that she can hold the staff. But the hands are on uh, pegs. So just like every other figure, pull them off. They're on the older style pegs, so they're a little bit smaller, a little easier to come out, but that also makes them a little bit looser in the peg. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the peg system, I'll kind of show it off in uh, some of these other figures because they have the newer pegs, or you can go watch uh, my Wave 10, Wave 10 review uh, to see the newer peg system in action. But yeah, so you can see, you can swap those out fairly easily. Um, and yeah, she does also have the Sorceress staff, which is just done up in all white, but you can see the Zor uh, molding up here on the top, which looks very nice. Big old staff with a little ball on the end. Not really much going on there. It is always a cool staff. I do like, and by always, I mean, you know, we've only gotten it one other time, but it is a neat staff. I do, uh, enjoy its aesthetic i just wish there was a little more going on to it and again it is just straight reuse from the sorceress which is part of the reason why tila is my least favorite of the wave uh because you know she's just eh, just kind of the sorceress again but uh with some new details which was 
to be expected uh, from a Tila who becomes the sorceress and being the sorceress's daughter, of course. <laughs> but that's still, she's still not bad. She is, um, she is fun. She actually looks really cool too. I love even just the standard pose here. Speaking of poses, let's go ahead and uh, talk about her articulation really fast. Mostly standard when it comes to mass reverse with some slight hindrances and differences uh the head is on a ball joint but because of the way the hair is uh only gets blocked so you can only move it that far around you can look up that far down that far the arms uh are on the the typical swivel joint system in there but due to the shoulder pads can only go forward and backwards that far they can go out this far they swivel at the bicep here she's got double jointed elbows right there as well all of the wrists do swivel and hinge uh she has the upper ab cut right there which is it moves beautifully on her i will not lie absolutely great movement happening there uh because of the way this mold is there is no uh hips or anything in there uh they're all just part of this one piece because of the skirt legs go forward that far and they go backwards i mean they can go backwards but they got to kind of be pushed against that uh they do go out that far terrible <laughs> terrible split sorceress tila that's really a shame uh legs they do uh they are on the the newer joint system with the legs so she's not entirely straight remold so uh you can see that the leg pivot does go down like that if you want her to be a little taller or get her into some other poses that she can't really hit but you know it is there <laughs> and there is a swivel up here at the thigh she has the double knee joint as well right there and she swivels here at the shin and she bends up and down and rotates at the foot so yeah i mean she is just as posable and well technically maybe a little bit more posable than the sorceress because of the new hip uh articulation that's added in there but still slightly restricted thanks to the head and the shoulders and the skirt so this is how tila's gonna look on my shelf for the most part but honestly that's Pretty much it with Tila, but let's go ahead and throw a couple comparisons really quick here just so you can kind of see how she scales. Here she is with Origins Moss Man, so you can kind of see how she would look with an Origins figure. Here she is with Classics Molar, so you can see how she would look uh, with your Classics display. And for comparison purposes here as well, uh, you can see here she is with the Masterverse Sorceress, and I guess I was misremembering um, how the Sorceress looked because actually these pieces are differently molded, um, which is actually nice to see uh, and quite refreshing. And her shoulders are a little more open than the sorceress's shoulders. Uh, so I think uh, you kind of trade some here because Tila's legs are less posable than sorceress's, but her arms are more posable than sorceress's. So it's kind of uh, an up and down, but the boots are the same uh, just with some different paint leg, actual legs themselves, obviously actual arms themselves and hands and the weapon are all the same, uh, but with some different chest and head molding uh, and apparently tunic molding, molding and the capes are different as well. Uh, Sorceress's looks really nice, but Tila's is uh, it's a little lackluster in comparison to the Sorceress one, I will not lie, but yeah, you can see uh, mother and daughter there together. All right, well, uh, I think that's going to be about it for Sorceress Tila, so we're going to go ahead and throw it over to our next figure, which will be Skeletor, or Skeletech, as he was referred to by the design team at San Diego Comic-Con. And my initial first kind of take on this Skeletor is that it's a really, really neat design overall, and I really am looking forward to uh, to revolution to see how this version of Skeletor comes into play because here in plastic form I think it's executed very very well there's a lot of cool stuff going on like down here to these Darth Maul uh, sort of cybernetic legs the head sculpt up here just looks really really cool we'll of course take a look at that in a minute and of course the big old sort of Havoc staff cybernetic arm which is really cool uh, and right before I started filming this I went to see if it was uh, movable at all and it kind of is and we'll talk about that in a minute but first let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details here on this Skeletor that is uh, motherboarded up so here is his head sculpt you can see the face molded into the hood it is all one piece with a dark purple for the hood with a red trim on it and we get the sort of typical Masterverse or I guess Revolution uh, Revelation Revolution style Skeletor head in there, kind of in that yellowy color, or yellowish, you know, the pale 
yellow rather than like a bright yellow greeny kind of color with a lot of cybernetic enhancement going on in there it is really really cool you can see in the eye and you can see sort of all around him it is very neat and the cybernetics transcend to the top of his torso here right around his neck with some dark grays and some light blues happening with we got some muscly sections here and he is uh in the sort of purple color that we saw on the the previous Skeletor, the Horde Skeletor from Masterverse rather than the typical sort of blue, which I think actually works very, very well for this version of Skeletor. Uh, and you'll see moving down here, he does have all this sort of cybernetic action happening on his torso, big blue greenish light there on his tummy. He does have a little bit of muscle and texture detail in the upper arm as well as cybernetic detail here in the lower arm with some detail happening there in the hand. Now, obviously, you can see that his other arm is just entirely cybernetic slash staffed up. Um, I don't really... This, it looks kind of like uh, wires, like big, thick wires that are all wrapping together to form this big arm piece. He does have this nice shoulder section here, which is done in a glossy purple with a little red trim. See more of that cybernetic detail here on the back with some big back muscle cybernetic detail. And we get a little bit of red and purple happening here on the, I guess what would be his forearm, as well as the Havoc staff head, which is the typical sort of goat head aesthetic in the light purple and the dark purple with a lot of nice cybernetic detail enhancement happening there. And looking at the lower half of the body, he has this sort of tunic, I guess, <laughs> what we could call that, made out of soft plastic. It is uh, like a dark purple with a red trim and you can see his cybernetic legs in here. I've got some marbling detail up here on the thigh parts, which which uh, presumably look like they are his some of the stuff that is remaining of his real body, I guess. Uh, and then we have his uh, robot legs here, which just are sculpted super, super cool. Uh, you can see they've got like a calf going on here with like an Achilles heel in the back, which is really, really neat, done up in kind of a silvery bluish texture. And of course, these big claw feet done up in sort of a, a dark gunmetal purpley color, which look absolutely tremendous. It's just such a cool look, honestly, uh, all around. It, it does kind of remind me of Clone Wars Darth Maul, uh, whether Skeletor is going to follow that route or not in the show. I guess we will have to wait and find out. But let's go ahead and talk about this version of Skeletor's accessories. Now, he doesn't really come with many. His big ones are he comes with an alternate hand, which is an open sort of grippy hand for, uh, you know, any weapons or anything that you would like him to hold in his hand. And we'll look closer here. You can see a little bit of detail happening there. He's got nice pointy fingers. And here's what I was talking about. This is a bigger peg. So this is the more updated peg system for Masterverse. So it is a little thicker. It's a little harder to pull out, but it is a much more secure connection once you get it in there. So still easy to swap out. Uh, it's just not as easy as the other one, the older style of peg. The other accessory we get with the Skeletor is a little crown. It is just uh, a circle <laughs> crown that is done up in all gold with a little gem in the middle and it fits as you would guess, right around his head with a little finagling. And honestly, that is a super great look. I prefer having the crown on. And I guess come January, we'll find out why uh, Skeletor is wearing King Randor's crown. Perhaps uh, Skeletor kills King Randor and takes over as King of Eternia. I don't know. We'll find out. But yes, so... Let's talk about the articulation here on this Skeletor because it's probably one of the more unique uh, articulation schemes in Masterverse just due to its nature. Uh, we're going to tackle the arm last and I'll say why in a minute. So first up here at the head, he does have a ball joint which gets, which gets him going You know, all around this way. It turns all the way around uh, and you also may or may not lose the crown in the process be careful there it can tilt side to side as you can see looks down that far up that far not really much arm is on the this arm is on the typical masterverse style of joint there so it goes all the way around goes up that far and it swivels here at the bicep as well as has a double elbow both wrists do have a swivel and a hinge uh, he does have the upper ab 
section rotation here so you can get him uh, crunching side to side, forward, back, and you can articulate that part individually. He does also have a waist swivel right there, uh, right under the, I'm gonna take the crown off because it keeps falling, uh, right under the big glowing orb that is in his chest. Uh, legs are slightly hindered up here at the hips. This one goes forward that far. It goes backwards, not that far. They do uh, drop down as well. They are on the more on the updated drop down hips, as you can see. Uh, swivels here at the thigh. It also swivels here right above the knee. You can kind of see it happening right there. Swivels there. The knee is on a joint that allows it to bend either direction uh, to 90 degrees, which is really interesting. He does also have a shin swivel right there, and the foot will pivot downward that much. It goes upwards that much, and it is on an ankle rocker. The other leg is a little more limited just due to the sculpt of the robe, so it can go forward only about that far, and it can go backwards that far, and they split not really much at all, honestly, which is a little disappointing, but hey, the robe thing looks cool, so we're gonna give him a pass. All right, so now let's talk about the other arm for a minute, the cybernetic arm here, because at first glance, uh, and at first kind of feel and messing around with, I thought it was stuck in this straight position, which is kind of disappointing because we see in the box art that it, you know, bends and acts kind of like an elbow. As I've messed with it a little bit more, I have discovered that the plastic is malleable. It's not bendy wire, but it is malleable enough to bend and hold a pose. And I'm not sure though the longevity of that. And I'll I'll say I'll tell you what I mean in a second. So up here at the shoulder, it does go all the way around. It can go out that far, and it kind of wiggles forward and back. Um, otherwise, the goat head on the havoc staff swivels here, so the wrist I guess swivels, and the fingers, or the hand, the mouth of the goat opens up. Um, which is really neat, and I'm glad that that exists. Um, and then, so I'll show you what I mean here. So the arm does bend ever so slightly, so you can kind of get it in a bending position. So that way, you can get him rocking a bend in that in that arm, and it makes him a little bit more dynamic. Now, this is like a softer plastic material, rubbery kind of material. If you bend it too much, I don't know if it's gonna risk cracking. I don't really wanna try to push it that far, um, but you can see that it does have some bend. I don't know whether holding it in this bending position will crack it after a while or not. I guess we will have to see. But for now, he can at least bend that arm a little bit, which is much cooler than just a static straight down arm. So, all right, that's enough about Skeletor and his features. Let's go ahead, do a couple quick comparisons here. Here is the Wave 11 Skeletor with your standard origins. Here is Mossman. Here he is with your classics. Here's Molar. And with another Masterverse figure of a character that they will probably have tons of interaction in the show. Here he is with Last Wave's Prince Adam. All right, so that's going to be uh, enough of the motherboarded up Skeletor. So let's go ahead and move on to our next figure, who is none other than New Eternia Man at Arms. Finally, Duncan gets a New Eternia update after a couple really solid Revelations figures. I was super excited to see the New Eternia take on Man at Arms here, and I will say... He does not disappoint whatsoever. There's a lot of cool stuff happening with Man at Arms here. So why don't we go ahead and get into those details. All right, so we'll come up here on the head sculpt for Man at Arms, the standard one that comes in box. And I love it. I think it's great. I love you see the nice big mustache on him there with some painted eyes and painted up eyebrows. And you can see the helmet going on here. It's got a a little bit of a different aesthetic than we're used to for the Man-at-Arms helmet, uh, but I actually really like it. It's a little thinner, uh, and it's got some extra details here on the top, done up in green and red there, which look really, really nice, and you can see he's got a little bit of green underneath because the helmet is removable. We'll get to that in a little bit, and you can see here, of course, the chest armor, which is very standard for Man-at-Arms, but it looks great. It's done up all in orange with a little bit of bronze paint here and some brown for the fur on the sides, and you can see, of course, on his chest ab section here. He's got a bunch of muscles. He's got a bunch of muscles here on his arm. There's all the standard uh, Masterverse uh, New Eternia body pieces that we see. And then here on this, this arm, he's got his uh, armor, um, but it's 
sort of evolved from what it usually is. It's got a big old pauldron here on the side, and it's got a little sword action happening done up in gold with a little bit of gold paint down here as well for the all the way down to the forearm aesthetic, which covers the hand there as well. These pieces are connected on a little little hinge joint, um, so if you want to separate them from each other, remove them from the figure, they're on the straps and whatever, you can do that. But just to give the illusion of the full arm aesthetic, they are attached, which I actually like. I think it's a really neat uh, design choice. Looking at the back here as well, you can see a little bit, a little bit of detail here at the top, a little bit of uh, like a bird type symbol there with a little ba uh, backpack piece, which can be used to store uh, his mace weapon. If you just click it in there at the handle, you can store it back there, which is a neat little touch. I do really like that. And you can see, of course, the rest of the back is, you know, pretty plain, pretty standard. We got the loincloth piece there, the legs, uh, and the boot pieces, which, uh, moving back to the front, you get the belt here, which has the big red jewel in the middle, and you get the loincloth piece, which is just a big armored belt, and the, the legs do have all the muscle texture detail there. And if you look at his feet, one of them is just the regular sort of man-at-arms boot aesthetic, and the other one is the big old armor piece. But what is interesting on this one is that unlike the other man-at-arms that we see in Masterverse, which is usually just the identical leg and then an armor piece that clips on, this one is actually how the leg is molded, which is pretty neat. Uh, and it's got some nice sort of uh, weathering paint detail on there as well, which looks great. And there are his feet, which are done up just in the regular brown. So the man-at-arms here, the new Eternia man-at-arms, is really, really solid. He is probably my favorite, if not the best man-at-arms that the Masterverse team has made so far. I just love him. He's a great aesthetic overall. I just think he came out really, really well as well. The new Eternia design, the little subtle changes that they did for him uh, work really, really well in his favor. And we'll see some of that now when we talk about his accessories. So, yeah, first we'll talk, of course, about his mace uh, weapon thingy. I never know what to call this truly, but you can see the, all the detail that is going on there. Done up in uh, sort of a goldish orange, I guess. I'm not a, a shiny chrome orange. Uh, and then the ball here on top is done in a slightly different orange. And you can see that it spins. And it spins for a reason, and that's because it is on a peg, which if you pull off the top part there, there is this alternate cover which is uh the same sort of aesthetic down here but it's got a chain coming out with a ball so you can see that the ball is actually a weapon there which i love i think that is a really really neat touch of course we saw that on the artwork on the back of the box um but i figured it was an actual chain that the ball was connected to and it would come out and the chain was stored down here but i actually kind of like that it is a swappable piece that is very very nice so you can slap it here in his hand you can see how that looks i think that's really really neat i love that it sort of gives this weapon accessory uh, a new flare oh whoa flail flare i don't know <laughs> but you know what i'm trying to say and yes so I do really, really enjoy that. I love when they kind of upgrade the weapons a little bit. Man at Arms does also come with alternate hands. He's got another fist and another open hand. They are on the new style peg system. So just like the other figures, they pop in and out. And uh, the only figure in this wave to include an alternate head. So we'll look at this really close here. You can see it's modeled more after the original toy aesthetic rather than the filmation aesthetic with the mustache and everything uh and yeah even the helmet is a little more classic man at arms aesthetic there on this one but the fun thing about this is the helmets both of them are removable they're a little tight but you can remove the helmets and you can see under here he's wearing kind of a cloth headpiece to cover his head under his helmet so what you can do if you would like if you like this head but you don't like this helmet as much you can remove this helmet put on maybe the more classic helmet here on this head and you've got what's a little bit more of a classic looking traditional looking man at arms with that aesthetic there which is really really neat i do absolutely love that you are able to swap the helmets and they're not confined to one head Oop, there he goes so yeah you can see you can even put that helmet 
on the other head there as well. And just to show it off, since he's the only figure in this wave to do this, just on the ball joint, you pop the head off and then you can just pop the other head on. So there, if you wanna give him a little bit more of the no mustache aesthetic, you absolutely can do that. But I prefer mine to be the other helmet or the other head with the with this helmet on. So gonna do a swap really quick. All right, back here in his standard look for this figure. And I am gonna cover the articulation really, really quick. It is the most standard uh, Masterverse articulation that we get out of this wave because he's just a normal dude and he's not really hindered by a lot. So we'll cover it really fast. Head is on a ball joint. Both heads can be on a ball joint. They look around that far. They go up and down that far, tilt side to side a little bit. Does have his uh, ab crunch swivel going on there, which is a little tight on my copy, but you see it still works. Arms go all the way around and they go out that far. They swivel at the bicep. They bend at both of those elbow joints there. All of the wrists do swivel and hinge just like you would expect, except for this one goes up and down. So rather than uh, side to side like most of them, like this one here, this wrist is an up and down wrist, which I love when they include up and down wrists on these guys. Uh, this arm over here is a little bit hindered in the articulation just due to the massive shoulder. So it can go out still about that far. Uh, and the arms double bend is a little bit restricted, gets it just a little bit more 90. Um, not a huge deal. And of course you can remove the, the peg system going on there if you wanna get more articulation. Waist swivel right there as well. Legs go forward that far. They go backwards that far, and he can full split. Finally, we have a figure in this wave who can full split, which is awesome, partially thanks to those drop down hips as well. Swivels here at the thigh. He's got double knee joints, a little tight on that one there, but you can see it does work. And of course, both of the shins do swivel. So at the, the, the metal boot and the regular boot, they do swivel, and then the feet go up and down and sideways all around. So with all the articulation out of the way, let's throw to a couple quick comparisons with Man at Arms here. Here he is with Moss Man for your origin scale, Molar for your classic scale, and just for fun, here he is next to the Revelations Deluxe Man at Arms, which was an absolutely fantastic Man at Arms figure as well, but he's edged out slightly by the new Eternia one. Sorry. All right, so I think that just about covers it here for the new Eternia Man-at-Arms, so why don't we go ahead now and take a look at my favorite figure in the wave. Yes, of course, it is new Eternia Trapjaw, and I am just in awe over how awesome this figure is. He is so, so, so good, so well done all around. Very, very happy with him overall and you can already tell that i'm just gonna be gushing over him for the next however long this segment will be why don't we just get into it and check out his details let's remove some of this excess bulk going on though really quick all right so we'll come up first to this absolutely marvelous head sculpt i am in love with how awesome this head sculpt is you can see of course it's got the sort of pinkish helmet color up here with a little bit of silver with the little ring there the face done up in all green with those yellow piercing eyes just looks magnificent. And the nice sort of shiny purple jaw there, which looks tremendous. But if you open up that jaw, oh, there is a little bit of grotesque uh, detail happening in there from where he doesn't have a bottom half of a jaw, which is just so, so cool. I love, love, love the way that looks nice and, and gross and just adds an extra layer to the head sculpt which is very, very appreciated. And we'll take a look here at the, the chest area. You can see underneath the armor is just sort of a regular Masterverse body. He's got, you know, chest muscles and ab muscles, but he got the strap here to hold in his robotic arm over here, which has also the strap piece right there. And you can see the actual robot arm itself is like a nice shiny gunmetal y gray color with a lot of detail on it. I love the way this design looks. It's just so cool. Super, super neat. Looks like it's got screws and stuff in it and pistons and hinges. 
Overall, really, really love the way that that was executed. And of course, here is one of his attachments. This is, you know, the claw one, which is really, really neat. Moving over here to the other arm, you can see he's got technological enhancements all over the place, which look great. And they're a different shade of blue. And they're a little shiny to help differentiate those. And you can see his loincloth here up in the purpley aesthetic with the nice green belt, which has a cool skull and crossbones logo with some rivet detail on it. Moving down here, a little bit of blue on the leg sections before we move into the very traditional looking trap jaw legs with the green sort of chevron aesthetic there as well as the black boots all the way down with the big kneecaps look very, very nice there as well. And if you take a look at the back, really more the same, nothing really crazy going on there. So yes, this, this trap jaw just looks so so good you know for a while we all had that revelations trap jaw and we're like ah oh, yeah this is good enough to pass as a classic trap jaw which granted it still kind of is but you'll see this this trap jaw is going to be the go-to standard classic trap jaw in masterverse i don't know how they could top this honestly i could say the same thing about man at arms too i don't know how they could top that man at arms uh, so they probably just shouldn't even try. But anyway, let's go ahead, talk about his accessories, because accessories are, of course, a big deal with Trap Jaw. So as you saw in the, the, the intro there in the turnaround, he does have a bunch of extra attachments. We'll kind of look at them one by one really quick, and we'll show off how they work uh, after we look at them all. Here is a, a new addition to the Trap Jaw armory i believe he's got a nice little dagger knife deal it's not long enough to be a sword um but he's got a really cool looking hilt there a skull it almost looks like the mythosaur which is really really neat with a little bit of a painted handle happening there nice in the blade got some chinks and, and damage there backside right there looks really really cool we'll set that aside so we can look at the gun weapon which like a shiny gunmetal kind of gray with a little bit of a regular gray color happening back there in the back and you can see that all the details in that one and of course he also has the big old hook which looks fantastic i love the way it looks here on the new eternia version nice shiny gunmetal gray big old hook with some hinges and pistons and everything uh, and yes, so in traditional trap jaw fashion, he does have a couple loops on his belt. All of the attachments do have a little hook on them so you can slide the attachments into the back of the belt so that he can store all of his attachments on him. The sword obviously does not have a little hook to go over the loop, but there is a loop on the back of him that serves as a sheath so you can push the sword into the back and... He can be all armored up there. Also, you can see that he does have a grippy hand over on this side, so you can get him to hold the dagger in his hand, uh, you know, either regular grip or reverse grip. And then, of course, you can pull off the attachment here, so we can pull off the claw attachment, and you can put in any of these other attachments. So you can put in the hook right there, which I love the, the hook aesthetic as well. It looks very, very nice. Or you can also put in the gun right there. Probably my least favorite out of all the attachments. Usually kind of is, I, I don't know. I always prefer the hook or the claw, but that's not all. You can also put in the sword dagger thingy in a two. Uh, his arm, which I love that look as well. That is super, super cool. And I love that they added that feature uh, that you can add it into his arm rather than just having him hold it or whatever. I think that is super cool, but I do love having him hold that, but we'll put it off to the side for now. Why don't we stick with the hook? Let's put the hook back in while we go ahead and cover his articulation really quick enough of the accessories all right jumping in here one qu real quick uh accessory note that i discovered uh as i'm editing the video before we move on to the next section about trap jaw here is something very very interesting about the claw accessory uh and the jaw of trap jaw himself because what i discovered is that these pieces so this one right here on the claw uh comes off it's just on small little nubs right there that you can see and if you can tell where this is going this piece also on his head is on the same small little nubs they're shaped very very similar uh because you can put that piece on the jaw and you can put the other piece just on the claw if you would like uh it makes the the claw look a little funky 
color wise, but the shape is the same. But in my opinion, it takes what was already a fantastic head sculpt and honestly kind of improves it. It's I love the way that this jaw looks. It is so, so cool. It is very, very menacing. Uh, and I love the way the things stick out on the side. And then you can see like it does open to reveal the inside, of course. Uh, you can also scrunch them up a little bit if you want to get that just because it is a little bit on the bigger side. But yeah, it fits on perfectly. Uh, and then you get the claw with uh, a gray and purple look to it and a very, very unique looking head or neat, I should say. It's not really unique, but very neat looking head there. So yeah, all right, now that completes accessories. Let's go ahead, move on to our next section. All right, so Trap Draw's articulation here is mostly standard for Masterverse. Basically, everything is regular. You know, ball joint up here, arm swivels all the way around, and it swivels at the bicep, and he's got a double elbow, and the wrist hinges and swivels, and he's got the upper ab cut, which lets him rock and roll here. He's got the thigh, or the waist swivel, which lets him swivel there. Legs go forward, woo, twisting forward that far. They go backwards that far. He can also do the splits thanks to the drop down hips, uh, which is great. He can swivel here at the thigh and he's got double knee and he swivels at the shin and his feet go up and down and all the way around, yada, yada, yada. Where his articulation gets fun is in, of course, the big old robot arm over here. So it is on a shoulder joint here that goes all the way around and it also goes in and out and kind of up and down like that. So you can get a good range there. He does also have uh, a big ball joint here at the elbow. So it does bend up that far and it also swivels, but it also is on like a, cause it's a ball joint. So you can kind of tilt it and all of the weapon accessories swivel here serving as a wrist. So you can actually get a lot of cool and different poses. Oh, and we, of course, the jaw opens up as we saw earlier. So you can get a lot of cool uh, variety, different poses out of the guy there, which is super, super fun. And I love getting to mess around with all the different attachments and see how I want to pose them there. So let's go ahead, throw to a couple quick comparisons and wrap this bad boy up. Here is Mossman for your standard origins, Molar for your standard classics, and here he is with the other Masterverse Trap Jaw, of course, the Revelations one, who I've got all up in his uh, motherboard aesthetic. But you can see some pretty glaring differences. And, and honestly, this one blows this Trap Jaw just completely out of the water. This guy is fantastic, especially compared to him. And we will bring all of the others in because we have reached the end of our closer look at Masterverse Wave 11. So without further ado, we will go ahead and toss it back up to me for my final thoughts. All right, so what are my feelings on Masterverse Wave 11 here? Well, I think there's some really solid stuff going on. I think Wave 11 might have edged out Wave 9? Plus the packaging is super, super cool. So there's that. All right, guys, that is going to be it for my full review of the Masters of the Universe Masterverse Wave 11. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts on these figures are in the comments down below. Whether you have them or you're anticipating them, tell me which ones you like, which ones you don't, which ones you're anticipating, which ones you're not. All of that fun stuff. Let's keep talking Masterverse in the comment section down below. And guys, that brings us to the end of another Masterverse video, which always makes me sad because you guys know how much I love Masterverse and how much I love sharing it with you guys. So, guys, as always, I've been your host, Acceptabon9. Thank you, as always, for joining me, and I will see you guys later.